Hi guys. So this is uh, basically 98th uh, Zoominar series of our QSTM forum. Uh, today our speaker is Dr. Chiara Taldo from Amsterdam University, and she is going to speak about updates on the search of multicenter anti-DCTA4 solutions. And it is based on some his some of her work, which will appear soon. And thank you, Chiara, for uh, giving this contribution for this forum. And uh, uh, we hope we can uh, learn a lot of things from you, including the students. So you can start. OK, thank you very much for the invitation. Yes. and. Um... As, uh, as um, I was mentioning, feel free to, to just interrupt and ask questions at any point during, uh, during the talk. We are very aware of a few people, so we can, uh, we can just interact a bit more freely. So I will, uh, I will tell you some recent work in progress uh, with my collaborator, Ruben Monten, which is at uh, UCLA, on the search for multicenter uh, anti deceter black hole solutions in four dimensions. So let me just start a bit setting up the stage. So why we are interested in this sort of uh, black holes or in general in, the, in black hole solutions, because black holes are often seen as a theoretical laboratory for a theory of quantum gravity. So indeed there is a striking resemblance between the laws of uh, thermodynamics and laws of black hole mechanics. So a black hole uh, radiated at a temperature which is proportional to the, um, to the surface gravity and, uh, and indeed possess entropy uh, proportional to the area of the event horizon. So this is indicative of the fact that gravity knows about the thermodynamics and the gravity is also holographic because indeed the degrees of freedom of black hole, they are pro proportional to the area of the event horizon and they're not proportional to a volume. So in black holes in string theory and in supergravity then, uh, which is the, the main stage in which our computation will, uh, will take place, or where our computation will take place, uh, so black holes in these sort of theories provide then a very valuable framework because indeed in these sort of uh, theories one can construct explicit solutions and uh, via some solution generating techniques these solutions are found uh, mostly um, via analytical, uh, analytical methods so one can just like write down exact solutions of these sort of theories. Moreover, uh, you can interpret these black hole solutions in terms of wrapped deep brains. And the string theory, indeed for all these reasons, allows to identify the microscopic degrees of freedom which are responsible to the uh, for the Bekenstein Hawking entropy. So indeed, one of the great success of string theory was the explanation of black hole microstates in terms of, uh, of counting strings on deep brains. So there were many studies which were carried out in the context of asymptotically flat black holes. And a lot of these studies, like uh, and there is an overwhelming uh, agreement uh, between the macroscopic features, so between uh, the, uh, the, this, the number of like the, the number of states which is uh, described by the Bekenstein Hawking entropy and uh, the microscopic features of counting states of strings on deep brains. So uh, starting from, and again, from the landmark work of Stromi and Jerevafa, there were lots of uh, very interesting connections also to number theory and, uh, and so on and so forth. So this paradigm or this, uh, this uh, framework quite recently was extended uh, to encompass also some other classes of black holes. And the one that I will talk about in this, uh, in this seminar, uh, like I will touch upon this topic is the class of anti uh, black holes. So indeed for this sort of uh, configurations, uh, so the idea of is that there is a dual field theory which lives on the boundary of uh, anti theater space and the entropy of the black hole is related to the counting of states in the uh, dual CFT, which, as I said, lives in the boundary of the space time in which the black hole is, in, is immersed to, into. So, and uh, in this case, when the boundary and, uh, and the bulk are supersymmetric, so when you have a supersymmetric anti theater black hole, one can perform a detailed counting of the states because there exist uh, some different techniques in, in the in field theory, in superconformal field theory, uh, for which you can compute uh, certain quantities, for instance, the partition function or supersymmetric indices, exactly, via techniques of uh, supersymmetric localization in the dual field theory. So, so uh, why- I have a question from the previous slide. So yes. uh, this is true that uh, if you have uh, some ADS safety correspondence, you can do that. But my question is this statement, like the black hole solutions can be found in 
any arbitrary dimension or there would be some restriction or something like that? The ones that, so um, in this talk, I will touch upon the microstage counting in um, four ADS black holes. And for, in this case, there were like a lot of evidence that you can also find supersymmetric solutions in uh, dimension, in higher dimensions, like in ADS four, five, uh, six, and seven. And this is uh, like, and people managed to reproduce the, uh, the entropy counting also for this sort of higher dimensional black holes. Okay, okay. So in this case, you will have, uh, you will have a lot of, we have quite a lot of examples that this microstate counting works also uh, for black holes in higher dimensions. Yeah, uh, particularly I have asked the question because you told that supersymmetry is there. Once this is supersymmetric, there would be a lot of additional uh, constraints. So that's why I, I was asking that, uh, like whether this counting is possible in higher dimensions or not. Yes, indeed. So uh, indeed, supersymmetry. Yes, once you uh, once you need to have supersymmetry, you need to solve the Killing Spinner equation. And yes, indeed, you can find a black hole solution um, uh, also in higher dimensions. Uh, yeah, the, the equations get more complicated. You have sometimes more matter, but uh, it was possible to find uh, again solutions uh, even in uh, in equal seven, for instance. They are rotating black holes with scalars and further charges. And uh, their construction was possible via solution generating techniques that were found by many people. Okay, thank you. So, um, okay, so there are many examples for this uh, sort of microstate counting for anti uh, black holes. And um, uh, there, are, there are some advantages indeed to uh, working with uh, black holes in anti -decitter. And uh, I will focus mostly on black holes in ADS4. So for dimensional uh, anti-theater space-time. And uh, one advantage of working in this, in this framework is that um, extremal ADS4 black holes, um, which rotate, can preserve supersymmetry. And this is uh, instead not possible in four-dimensional Minkowski space. So in anti-theater space, the VPS band, which is, uh, which is this one that I, that, I, that I wrote here in the slide, is compatible with the extremality bound. So you can find a solution which has zero temperature, like, and also that preserves some supersymmetry. While uh, for solutions which are asymptotically Minkowski, uh, as soon as you impose the BPS bound and you try to add angular momentum, you, um, you don't find compatibility. Your solution becomes a naked singularity. So uh, you can actually perform the counting of states on black holes, which have supersymmetry and are also extremal. And uh, this solution, particular class of solution here in four dimensions, like the new horizon geometry of this sort of uh, solution in anti-decitter falls into the same class as the near extremal, uh, near horizon extremal care uh, geometry, which describes uh, astrophysical black holes. So this describes uh, black holes which uh, are present in our universe. So since the microstates of black hole entropy are thought to reside like in the near horizon region, by performing this sort of computation for black holes, which have uh, uh, like anti theater asymptotic, we hope to learn something about more realistic black holes because indeed, if you zoom in into the near horizon geometry, the class of the near horizon geometry is, uh, is the same. So there were impressive progress like, uh, um, like in the microstate counting for this kind of black hole that I will come back to at the, at the end of the talk, uh, just to give you a bit of the, the full picture. And uh, indeed, as I was saying, there was an impressive progress in, uh, in counting, this, uh, counting the microstates for anti theta black holes via superconformal indices. And this also, um, also encompassed the case, the higher dimensional case. For instance, there was a lot of, a lot of uh, work in the past three or four years, which concerns uh, ADS5 black holes and uh, N equals four super young mills uh, superconformal index. So I'm gonna put, uh, like I'm gonna now switch a bit uh, gears, but hopefully uh, towards like the end of the introduction, everything will be, uh, will come together. Like uh, why we are interested in this sort of black holes in anti -theater. So um, black holes, is the, so if you release the constraint to supersymmetry, you can have black holes instead with temperature. And uh, black hole with temperature correspond to a uh, um, thermal uh, quantum field theory in the boundary. So black holes in anti -theater, they are useful not only for this microstate counting uh, like a framework, but also because you can use a black hole in anti -theater with temperature to model some processes which uh, are strongly coupled in the, uh, in the dual field theory. And one, the hope is to model these strongly coupled field theory processes such as superconductivity by means of uh, black holes, uh, like of tractable systems of black holes in the bulk. 
So it will deal with uh, models of uh, ADS black hole with, uh, with scalar hair and uh, possibly supported by matter fields and vectors. And the phase transition between black holes will, will be mapped into phase transition in the dual field theory. And the phase transition between black holes will manifest itself as some sort of reorganization of the geometry itself. So the geometry will be reorganized along the phase transition, but also the matter uh, outside the horizon will also be subject to some changes. So the whole point, like the point of this talk is to find a specific, uh, specific um, say class of black hole solution in anti-sitter in four dimensional anti-sitter space. So we know that uh, in anti-sitter space, you can, uh, you can tune boundary, boundary conditions in particular at the, at the conformal boundary and you can identify uh, a black hole horizon. Uh, this is possible indeed. There is a, like a plethora of examples of very exotic uh, black holes in a, in theories of uh, general relativity, of course, of supergravity with anti-sitter anti asymptotics. For instance, you can find black holes which, have, which, um, which present like uh, spikes due to the fact that the, um, the black hole rotates very fast, or you can, um, you can have black holes which present spherical protrusions out of, uh, of a planar horizon. So what this talk will be about will be to try to find solutions uh, which, um, which admit multiple centers. So, solutions in, in which uh, multiple black holes coexist in the same space-time. And these are uh, also called fragmented geometry. So indeed, like in which every, so every, um, every dot that I indicated here black is a, a, single, a single black hole. And uh, you can find these sort of systems are, uh, we, are we are not gonna study uh, the systems, uh, like uh, the positions of all, this, uh, of all these black holes will not be uh, posed, like will not be um, set into a lattice. So this will be solutions of fragmented geometry with this, with this order. So there will be uh, like, yeah, all these positions here will not be on a grid. And, uh, but the, the mutual positions will be due uh, to the balancing between the gravitational interaction and the electromagnetic repulsion. So what we're after are fragmented geometries, which, uh, which are disordered, but yet they are rigid indeed because the distances are fixed and they will exhibit no, many local free energy minima. And this configuration will in general arise upon cooling the system. So they will, they will be left with a disorderly frozen distribution of this black hole which arise once you lower the temperature, which arise indeed upon cooling the system. And this sort of scenario really uh, like uh, resembles a lot uh, a system that we're all very familiar with, which is glass. So indeed glass is, a, is, a super, is a defined as a super cooled liquid. So it shares the disorder of a liquid, but it's also uh, rigid as a solid and it's characterized by very, very high viscosity. And uh, so there exists, uh, very, uh, like they were very well studied, like this uh, static uh, landscape based model for, for glass, which exhibit indeed many, uh, exponentially many local free energy minima. So these models here, uh, they, they really describe static aspects of glass uh, very well. However, other more dynamical aspects of formation of heterogeneities uh, along the glass phase transition, they are poorly understood. So we would like to see if a holographic model, such as like a, like a system of multicenter black hole could be used to describe some disorder systems such, such, as, uh, such as glass. So in our framework will be, uh, like our framework will be such that uh, so in this idea, let me mention that was put forward by Fred Edenef and his collaborator and dates back uh, quite, a few, quite a few years ago. So in our framework will be that at high temperature, the single center solution will, uh, will be the one that we think it's favored. So a single center black hole, uh, like the horizon behaves like a liquid and it can undergo supercooling, meaning that if we lower the temperature fast, uh, what we think it will happen is that indeed a black hole horizon will, will turn into something which is fragmented. So it will be like, it will have many, many different centers at uh, a different position, which are indeed dictated by the, uh, by the various, uh, by the various uh, electromagnetic and gravitational interaction. So this will be the, like for our case, will represent the, the, um, the single center black hole will represent the liquid phase, but upon cooling the, the temperature, we are gonna, we, uh, our system, is supposed to turn into something that resembles more like a glassy face, which is the multicenter black hole, which I depicted here. So another, uh, indeed, holographically, yeah, I, have, I, have, I have a question. Yes. Once you cool mm -hmm. the system, from where these small, small uh, black holes are coming? From so this is um, indeed, so, um, so by the, 
And then you have in GR, you have the known bifurcation theorem. So a, a horizon in this case cannot, uh, cannot fragment, cannot uh, be fragmented just by classical, pro uh, classical processes. In this case, some, there will be some quantum, like a quantum process or some sort of Gregory Laflamme instability that will allow a horizon to split into many, many ones. What we are gonna see in this talk is that just purely from a classical point of view, we will find that systems of probe black holes uh, will be favored at lower temperature with, res with respect to a single one. But indeed the actual physical process for which, uh, for which we see all these small black holes coming out of the black hole, this is not yet known and will most likely arise via some sort of quantum process. Will, uh, will be, um, yeah, so it will be required a, like a quantum process in order to describe this sort of like dynamical, uh, dynamical passing, dynamical process. Okay. What we, yeah, what we will see is just thermodynamically, uh, this configuration here, it would seem to be favored at a low temperature with respect to this. Okay, so, and this is, so this is what, uh, what will be uh, like uh, the main object of, of our talk, seeing if there exists this sort of configuration, because this is already, as I will mention later, already finding multicenter configurations in the space spacetime, it's a long-standing challenge. But before going to the next slide, let me mention that indeed a system of, of this kind, uh, it is also like will induce uh, like some, indeed some uh, inhomogeneities in charge densities and magnetic fields in the boundary of your of the space time because this is still embedded in anticipator space. And this will produce at the level of, uh, at the level of the dual field theory, a much higher viscosity with respect to the viscosity, uh, the viscosity that was found for instance by, uh, by plan for um, planar, brains, where, which, which is the normal or the well-known bound e over, e over s is, uh, is one over four pi. So what we think is that a configuration of this kind will be characterized by very, very high viscosity that can indeed like give you the flavor of how a system like that can actually describe at least the qualitative features of a glassy system. So well, let me see now how, what are these configurations from? What do we know about configurations of multiple black holes which coexist in the same space time? So configuration like this, or let me mention like what this, so where the centers are comparable one to, one to each other. They were known and uh, so they're known that they exist. They were constructed already in 47 by Majumdar and Papa Petru in asymptotically flat space time. So asymptotically flat, multicenter black holes, they exist. They were very well studied. They were studied also in, uh, in string theory and supergravity, starting from the work of Frederick Deneff and Dieter Lust and, uh, and Sabra. And uh, their microstate is also like uh, there's a lot of connection with the interest in mathematics of wall crossing. So in asymptotically flat space, these configurations of, multi, of multiple black holes in the same space time, they are known, they're very well studied. However, and uh, the fact that they, um, uh, they exist is due to the fact that the gravitational interaction uh, like can balance exactly the electromagnetic repulsion between, the, between two centers or between many centers. However, multi-center multi black holes in anti-receiver space time have been uh, like a long-standing challenge have been and still are a long-standing challenge. So there are no known solutions of, of this kind, no, for sure not, uh, not exact uh, solutions. And for a, for a long time, it was known, it was uh, thought that these solutions were not actually uh, present or they could, there was some sort of like a law that the solution could not uh, exist in anti-sitter space-time because indeed uh, anti-sitter uh, acts like a box. So it is some sort of provide some sort of a confining potential that indeed will uh, will um, will make two centers kind of like will push uh, together the two centers, thereby spoiling the equilibrium condition between the centers that arrive, for instance, in asymptotically flat. However, as I was mentioning, in anti-sitter space, there are many classes of very like a very different uh, different solutions, and um, uh, apart from the ones that I studied, which has some very like highly deformed horizon, there can also be configurations where you have a black hole which hovers on top of a black brain. So you have a planar black brain and a spherical black hole solution which which stays on top of that in equilibrium. Moreover, so these were like uh, found by many studies of uh, Gary Horowitz and George Santos and collaborators. And people also found some solutions of, um, of uh, exact multi uh, like dynamical multi uh, 
and dynamical space-time with the multicenter black holes with the negative cosmological constant. However, the solutions here, they had, they had some singularity in the boundary. So some solutions have pathologies, some others are not, but in a way or another, like these studies go into the direction of seeing what you can do actually in, um, in anticipator space when you ask for a disconnected horizon, like with two, two black holes with, like, with a, a separation distance, let's say. So the easiest uh, thing that one can do is to, um, and what was done in asymptotically anticipator in, in asymptotically flat space um, uh, already, is to work in the probe approximation, meaning instead of working in a situation in which the sizes of the black hole are comparable, thereby really like two different centers, we are gonna work under the assumption that you have like, uh, that uh, we will have a big uh, black hole, um, in anti sitter surrounded by many probe uh, black holes. So the probe black hole will have a mass which is neg negligible with respect to the, um, uh, to the big one. And we're gonna treat the, the cloud of, uh, of probes, uh, of the cloud of uh, black holes. In this case, we're gonna consider single probes. Uh, yeah, we're gonna consider like this black holes to be very, very small, uh, to be treated them as, uh, as probes, let's say. So this is, we are gonna work under this assumption. So systems of pro black hole on top of a very big one. So what will be, uh, so in our talk, we'll, we will deal with this sort of system and we're gonna show that indeed there exist stable uh, configurations of this kind where you find a probe which is stable outside, outside the event horizon. And one can think then that once you have a stable probe, you can uh, have it back react, you can increase its mass in such a way that you can find actually a two center or a multi center configuration. So I will tell you uh, indeed how uh, you find you study this sort of configuration. So I will first uh, describe how to construct a very specific kind of background black hole, which is the, the big one that I should like this big black background black hole here in a specific truncation of M theory um, to ADS for space time. This is a particular truncation in which the indeed the black hole is made by by brain wrapped in uh, like wrapping non contractible cycles in your internal manifolds. I will study the thermodynamics of the background and then on the stable branch of this background solution, I will study the stability of various kinds of probes. And I will include also something like some some slides about what happened if I require the background to be supersymmetric, if there exist or not stable probes. Finally, I will, uh, I will go back to the microstate counting that I mentioned in the previous, um, I mentioned in the, in the previous slides so that to tie up all the, um, all the topics together. Uh, it will be a bit speculative, probably this, this last point. I will review a bit what is known about um, single center, the microstate counting for single center ADS4 solution and what we can expect, if any, from, uh, from the intuition that we gain from the probe analysis if we can expect something coming up uh, or some hints of this uh, possible multicenter solution from the microstate counting. The answer will be, it's still too early to say, but I, I, will, I will tell you a bit more about that uh, just toward the end. Are there any questions at the moment? No, you just start with problems. Okay, so, uh, okay, so I'll Is just go on. a question from students Sorry. or other attendees? If not, you can proceed. Okay, thanks. So let me, uh, okay, as I was mentioning before, there were like the original uh, multicenter black hole solutions were found by, uh, by um, analyzing the supergravity uh, Lagrangians. So there are some specific techniques to find exactly uh, black holes, like uh, exact. Sorry. Hello. Yeah, suddenly yes. connection disconnected. You know, you continue. Okay, okay. Shall I go on then? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So indeed, um, so what was known uh, so far by all these studies, so all these people studied um, solutions of uh, like, uh, like perform the probe analysis 
on, uh, on both Minkowski and anti-sitter black hole solution in supergravity and show that there exist stable and metastable probes in a background of a thermal uh, four-dimensional uh, black hole with ionic charges, so electric and magnetic charges with scalar profile and neutral scalars. So they have uh, done this, uh, this procedure for uh, black holes which are asymptotical Minkowski and also for ADS compactification with ultra scalars. However, if you see that like in ADS4 compactifications, which are dual to a BGM theory on, or other superconformal Charles Simons theory, you can see that one linear combination of the gauge fields is Higgs, uh, and that is massive. So the most general compactification to BGM theory, they, do, they don't have only neutral scalars, but they have also charge scalars that can actually alter the picture and uh, do something and like, and. Um, and uh, have new processes interacting, uh, like and like kind of messing up the, the probe analysis. So one needs to review this procedure in a more general black hole background, which we chose to, uh, to uh, as a particular like as a solution to a particular um, supergravity truncation, which have um, charge scalars and massive vector field, but also has no contractible cycle in the Sasaki Einstein manifold such that the black hole solution that we, that we have can really be interpreted in terms of wrapped brains. So in our model, so we focused on our model, which will be M-theory on a seven-dimensional uh, homogeneous sasaki einstein manifold, which is called Q111, has a topology of uh, S2 times S2 times S2, uh, and, and, and a S1 vibration over this three S2, so it's seven-dimensional manifold. So upon reducing uh, M-theory, uh, 11 dimensional supergravity on this manifold, one gets to a model of 4D N equals to uh, so-called gauge supergravity, which admits indeed an ADS4 vacuum, which preserve all the supersymmetries. So this truncation was spelled out in a beautiful paper by Castani collaborators. So the solution, the black hole solution that we are after will be a solution to the equation of motion of this Lagrangian here, where you can see that they have like, a, there are many different uh, terms. There is the Einstein-Hilbert term, there are like, so the, the content is indeed the, the gravitational multiplet, three vector multiplets, which also have the complex scalars. And also we will have a universal hypermultiplets. So the scalars in the universal hypermultiplets, they are the ones which, uh, which are charged and they will, they will be responsible for the Higgsing of one of the, of one of the vector fields. So this is this truncation here is also specified by speci uh, by um, by the killing prepotentials and the killing uh, the killing vector of the gaugings, and uh, so indeed this uh, this quantity here specify the couplings of our like indeed the killing uh, the killing vectors the quaternionic killing vectors appear in the covariant derivative uh, on this piece here, and indeed they they determine all the couplings in your supergravity Lagrangian, which here I don't show, but one can can work them out really easily. And the dual field theory to this sort of uh, truncation here is a, a cousin of uh, ABGM, meaning an N equals two superconformal Chern-Simons matter theory and we've studied by, studied by these people. So this is, will be our setting where we're gonna find black hole solutions, uh, like the background black hole solutions, the one that we, uh, we are interested in, that we, will use for the, that we will use then later for the probe, for the probe analysis. Kiara, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm really familiar with uh, working in asymptotically flat where you don't usually think of the hypermultiplet. Is the hypermultiplet very important for the ADS story or? Um, it, meaning that, uh, so in our, um, so for ADS, like, for, sorry, well, like, for ABGM, mm -hmm. so for, only for ABGM, you can, in some cases, you can truncate out the hypermultiplet. Yeah. This was the, the case in which uh, uh, Frederick and, and collaborators uh, used. That right. was the, the failure of Poulos gauge supergravity coming from the N equals eight, the SO8, the maximal gauge, the one that you get from the on the seventh sphere. But in this case, when you when you're dealing with manifolds with non-contractible cycles and, and so on, you always have hypermultiplets. If you want to truncate sure. them out, you will have a, a very um, you have a very reduced uh, theory. You will have there is still the universal Sasaki Einstein truncation, but then it's, it's really like reduces to minimal. I guess my uh, question is more if, you know, from, a, from, I guess you're gonna talk about this, right? But like yes. from the point of view of your solutions, is it, it, is it gonna be crucial that this hypermultiple, is this hypermultiple gonna play an important role? Yes, in, so very in important. Yes, okay. yes, it will be in like a, an essential role because it will be the one that gives you the massive vector. 
that will characterize ah, your ah, solution. Okay. So that okay, is really great. something that. Uh, so we are going to turn on only one of the um, of the four um, hypermultiplet scalars, but this will be essential in order to uh, to have some dynamics uh, in your theory. Okay. And Thanks. in particular, to have this uh, massive vector uh, that I was also talking about, it will be uh, like it will make our uh, our black hole more similar to the holographic superconductor. And in general, having like this is really like uh, yeah, it's. The hypermultiplet is essential to have one of the one in a combination of the gauge fields to be Higgs. So yes, it will play. And that's going to be important for your construction of the multicenter solutions. That it's yes, Higgs. I mean, uh, I mean, the point is that it's, it is a big, uh, um, byproduct of the fact that we want to to deal with this sort of truncations and want to deal really with wrapped brains. Right. On the S seven, uh, there are no non contractible cycles, so uh, right. we want okay. to really study these manifolds. That in particular they have hypermultiplets and also uh, that will uh, will give you a massive vector. So yes, I know that in the asymptotically flat case, hypermultiplets decouple. In this case, it's not because they, they interact via the in particular via the potential via the, the coupling sphere, but also this potential that I showed here. It, con it couples both hypers and vectors, vector multiplet scalars. Thanks. Okay, so this is our setup will be like so that our black hole solutions will be solution to this sort of uh, to the equation of motion of this uh, of this Lagrangian. So due to the fact that the hypermultiplets are uh, are uh, um, hypermultiplet scalars are charged, we have that linear combination that we denote as theta, which is the, this particular combination of the gauge fields becomes massive. So uh, via Higgs mechanism, uh, so this will correspond to to a broken symmetry in um, in your theory. And uh, so black hole solutions, uh, so we are going to be interested in black hole solutions. So we'll have also like spherical horizon, but we'll also deal with planar horizon and also hyperbolic horizon. So we have different topologies. So we are interested in solution with, uh, with T greater than zero, because in general, we would like to see that upon raising the temperature, the single center solution will be the one that will be favored. But when you cool down the system, the states with probes outside the horizon, with stable probes outside the horizon, get, get populated. So for what we'll need to do is to solve the, the couple system of second order Einstein, Maxwell, and scalar, um, and scalar equations. Let me just mention that BPS solutions, however, so solution with supersymmetry were found by solving the first order equation of motion, like numerical as well, by uh, Gontlet and Donos and also by Amagi Petrini Faroni, um, like some years ago. So uh, we are also going to work under a simplifying assumption because we, our, um, our matter content will be, will be pretty like a we will have a lot of a lot of fields in our in our theory so we are going to adopt one simplifying assumption that will be the we are going to set all the hypermultiplet scalars except one to zero and uh, we are gonna and then our scalar modes will be uh, will have this kind of mass here for and uh, like exactly four of them will have mass equals minus two which allow for both ordinary and alternate uh, quantization moreover in our we are, there will be uh, other, uh, other, let's say, constraints on our theory. And uh, for instance, since the fermions in your theory are electrically charged, they would, like in case of compact horizon, you will need also to impose a Dirac light quantization on the black on the black hole magnetic charges, which are exactly these ones. So, okay, what we did now is that so what we did uh, like in the in the following is that we have uh, um, computed the equation of motion for this for this big Lagrangian under the simplification of the uh, under the, ass the assumption that only one of the hyper hyper multiple scalars is running the other one are set to zero and we also have imposed a statically spherical symmetry concept so I'm going to show you here only the the one uh, for the black hole with with the spherical symmetry so this is uh, this one for the moment. So the scalar depend only on the radial coordinate, and also we have a particular choice for the, which is the normal static uh, spherical symmetric for your for your gauge field. So the max given this sort of symmetry, we have that the Maxwell equation uh, yield the condition that the massive vector is purely electric. So we have no uh, magnetic component of the massive vector. Otherwise, we will have vortices in our solution. And uh, indeed, this will break the spherical symmetry. We're going to have something which is axial symmetric, which at this point we cannot handle. So we just impose spherical symmetry. So what we did, we take our equation and we expand in series at the black hole horizon and at infinity. And uh, by 
a numerical shoot techniques uh, technique we demand the solutions to match in between so we shoot from the boundary from the horizon and we demand that the solution uh, meet uh, in between the bulk with a very high precision so it depends on on which so in some cases we also identify for instance to the scalars and to the vector fields that is will be the most uh, the most usual scenario because otherwise the, the system becomes too big so what we have deal what we have dealt with in the construction will be that um, is that we had 14 equations in general first order equations and uh, at the end of the day we're going to have uh, we're going to be left with seven free parameters which correspond to the black hole electromagnetic charges and the mass which can be equivalent to trade, traded for the temperature of the black hole so as an example, we managed only we managed in this case. This is a fully back reacted solution, so that's the background solution. Which, however, we don't manage to find it analytically because when you have charge scalars, this is really like a very a very complicated system. So the result of all these numerics are this function here, which uh, which indeed they characterize the world factors present in your solution, the hypermultiplet and also the vector multiplet scalar and the massive vector field, which has a peak just outside the horizon. So the black hole that we are dealing with, so um, our numerics are, uh, we checked our numerics against the first law of thermodynamics, which was found to hold. So this means that our, our computations are, are accurate. And uh, the solution that we, we came to is a black hole with some sort of a massive vector field halo. So indeed the solution is a black hole, but given the fact that you have a massive vector field outside, it is surrounded by some sort of a massive object, which is this, this massive vector field outside. And this massive object stayed, stays outside because it interacts non-trivially with the many different, uh, with the other many different ingredients in our solution, which which are indeed hypermultiplets and also and, and the vector and the vector multiplets in general. So this is our background solution. What we have studied then is that so the first law of thermodynamic holds, but then we need to study like uh, the thermodynamics. We need to find a stable black hole branch in such a way that then we can put probes on top of that. And uh, so uh, here we plot the temperature versus the entropy and the free energy versus the temperature. So each one of these points takes, uh, takes a lot of time for the computer to simulate. I think at this stage we are about two hours. So let me just uh, switch to a different kind of graph, which is uh, a bit like a, a bit more cartoonish, but just to give you the, give you the flavor of how, the, how is the thermodynamics of this black hole is that uh, once again, it is very similar. A charged black hole has a phase diagram, which is very similar to uh, the one that was found for uh, ADS, um, ADS charged black holes by Chamblin and collaborators. So indeed for a fixed temperature, we are working with a fixed, fixed charge and fixed temperature. So what we call the canonical ensemble, you are gonna have up to three black hole branches. So we have the small, which is the, the, first, the first branch here that, uh, that is uh, increasing in te temperature versus ice. The medium one will be the one that goes uh, that goes um, decreasing, like for which the temperature is decreasing, uh, in terms of uh, like um, as a function of the entropy. So the medium black holes are always unstable, and there are the large black holes, which which again is this branch here, which I denoted into in the which which has the um, the red color. So you can see that if you plot the free energy, indeed the medium black holes they are never part of the picture because you have to follow the line of the lowest free energy. So there is a phase transition between the small black holes and large black hole at the, at the point at which you, you have this, uh, this dashed line here. So these are like a, indeed a first order phase transition because the derivative of the free energy is uh, discontinuous. So once we are gonna, one, when we are gonna put probes on top of the branches, we need to make sure that we are dealing with this small branch up to here and then the large one. We need to make sure that we don't put our probes on top of a solution which is not stable. And that's what we make sure in our, in our um, subsequent computation. Moreover, let me mention that indeed along the phase transition, which is of the form, again, the small large black hole, the vector field, the massive vector field also like uh, has some sort of like, I told you that along a phase transition, a black hole phase transition, there are some reorganization of the geometry. So indeed a black hole from small becomes large, but also the matter outside the horizon uh, changes. So indeed for a small black hole, you have that the amplitude of the massive vector field is very, uh, very, very large. But for a, for a large sized black hole, uh, the, the, vector, the massive vector field is, uh, is tiny. So indeed the black hole comes from being like small and in it, increases its size by swallowing uh, the massive vector field uh, halo, which is, uh, which is outside. 
Let me also mention before passing to the probe analysis is that in this case, it's, it's a bit different with respect to the case of the holographic superconductor because the condensate, which in this case is like the expectation value that you will get from the, um, from the mode, the asymptotic mode of the massive vector is never vanishing. So the massive vector is always switched on. There, so there is no restoring of the broken symmetry as uh, instead there is uh, in the holographic superconductor. But okay, so this is just like how our black hole, like uh, how is the thermodynamics of our black hole and what are the stable branches that we are gonna put our probes on. So, okay, so now we have charted uh, the phase space of, for, uh, for our background big black hole. And we're gonna put uh, probe brains on top of that. This will, uh, will be uh, in the probe approximation, our small black holes, which will form then a multi-center multi -center solution. So as I was mentioning, well, our expectation is that at high temperature, the single center horizon will be thermodynamically favored. So our expectation is that if you plot uh, a probe potential for a, a black hole with higher temperature, the probe potential will assume the form of the, of the one which I depicted here in green, meaning that the probe will just be unstable. The minimum of the probe potential, we expect it to be really at the horizon. The horizon, we normalize our probe potential in such a way that, um, that it's zero at the, at the event horizon of the black hole. So we expect that at high temperature, the probes will have a profile like the one in green. However, when you cool down the system, we expect the probes to populate states which are metastable, like this one, like uh, the orange one, in which you have a local minimum, which is not, however, a, a global minimum, and stable probes for which, indeed, instead you have a minimum which is, uh, um, which is lower than zero, such as the one that I depicted here in, uh, in blue. So for these blue probes, these blue probes are um, thermodynamically favored to stay, uh, to stay outside the horizon, thereby and thereby forming some, uh, some sort of multicenter system. So indeed, that's what we will, need to, we will need to do to study this sort of configurations on top of the black hole that we just have constructed. So uh, indeed, we have considered like a horizons of different topology before I was, I was showing only the, the spherical one, but we have constructed also planar or hyperbolic uh, horizons. And we have considered many kind of instability uh, of, our, of our black holes. So we have the uplift. Uh, so in order to find, uh, um, to find, like we need to find these instabilities, we will need to consider potentials of wrapped probe brains. And we need to, um, to then have our own, uh, you need to consider our up, the uplift of this solution. So we, and this is known already from the, from the paper that I showed you before of Cassani, Kerber and Barella. So indeed, uh, once we find a solution for dimensions, we can immediately uplift to 11 dimensions on these sort of manifolds. And the matrix is this one that I showed you here, where the six dimensional base is just, uh, like it's just um, three, uh, three, three two spheres, so S2 times S2 times S2. And the coordinate that you write here is called phi is just the M, uh, the M theory fiber. So this, this coordinate here is fibered on, on the three two spheres. Moreover, we also have this, uh, the field strength of the, of the three form for the M theory, which assumes uh, into this form. So this is a, uh, a configuration like at 11 dimensional uplift of our solution that we obtain uh, if we set the axions to zero. So, uh, and this is possible because in what, uh, in what follows, we'll consider only configuration which have, with, uh, which have either purely electric charge or purely magnetic charge. So in, in this case, uh, this is, uh, so um, you can consistently set the axions to zero and uh, the uplift is this way, is this, uh, this kind. You will have a slightly different uplift with a bit, uh, with a bit more complicated, but for the moment we are just uh, simplifying our, our computations under this further assumption. And we'll see that it's enough to find, uh, to find stable probes. So, okay, we have our uh, 11, dimensional, uh, 11 dimensional uplift. So then the, the first example that we tried, uh, we tried an, uh, to, um, to probe our black hole solutions um, like uh, against some instability, we have considered, first of all, uh, like as a first example, uh, M2 brains, so uh, M2 brains in, uh, in type, uh, sorry, in, uh, in M theory. And we are going to consider, we have considered space-time filling brains. So brains that uh, fill the space-time, which are the one of the horizon, like which we call it uh, X, Y, and also the, again, the coordinate T. So for this sort of configurations, you can, you can construct, like you can, 
indeed this is just the, the production, you compute them and in, uh, in case of uh, uh, black brains, electric black brains, you already start finding an instability when you lower the temperature. This is something that, uh, that at least goes into the right direction that we show that indeed, if you have, uh, if you have uh, an electric black brain, with our symmetry field turned on, you will have some instability. Once you lower the temperatures, your system should undergo some sort of change because the potential for space time filling brains go dips below zero and has this sort of asymptotic, uh, asymptotic behavior. So this means that your, uh, your brain can lower the energy uh, by speeding away, like, and speeding away space time filling brains that move towards the boundary of space time. And uh, so this is the first instability that we find, and it's due precisely to the fact that we have switched on the R symmetry field. So the R symmetry field was the, this field A0, which acts as some sort of like uh, um, angular momentum in the 11 dimensional, uh, in the 11 dimensional object. So this will, has the flavor of being some sort of like instability due to some sort of centrifugal force that pushes your, um, your brain like pushing like the space time filling pro brains away towards the boundary of space time. So, okay, for the moment for, we have this, meaning that, okay, if we lower the temperature, we see that the system kind of does something which is in the right direction. So the next, uh, the next thing that we, um, we tried is to, is to consider wrapped M2 brains. So in this case, this is the case that will be most relevant to us. Uh, because indeed, uh, if you uh, like, we want to wrap M2 brains on uh, cycles of the internal manifold in such a way that in four dimensions, uh, the, um, the resulting brain is res uh, like it's seen as point like. So indeed, we would like to have this, uh, uh, indeed this, this brain that are point like, there are some sort of like, uh, just localized as it was a very small black hole uh, on top of, a, of, of the big background black holes. So, some studies were already carried out by Klebanov, Pufu, and Siliano already some, some years ago for planar horizons. So for the moment, what we have done is also to consider other sort of horizons, in particular spherical ones. So this paper also tell you, like also told us how, uh, like the cycles on which uh, th there are some particular cycles, minimal volume cycles, in which we can, we can wrap these M2 brains that have the, the most likelihood to form bound states. However, uh, these people also find that we find the same that if you put M2 brains on top of uh, on top of this uh, this background, which is uh, which is again which is purely magnetic, uh, you will not find any stable uh, any stable configurations because indeed like uh, this this pro brains they have only they all have some sort of monotonic potential that tells you that all this sort of M2 on a background which is uh, purely purely magnetic will not be able to stay in um, to stay in equilibrium but will just just full inside the horizon. What this tells us is that in analogy to the asymptotically flat case, in order to find bound states, you most likely need to have mutually non-local charges. So you, you find that you need to, to find uh, like brain, sorry, probe and, uh, and background need to have charges of different nature, for instance, electric and magnetic and, and, uh, and vice versa. So we need to consider probes which are not just M2, but it will be something more elaborate. So this is the other step that we made. So th the next step is that um, we considered, uh, like we reduced our theory to type type two A, so from M theory on the on the cycle that I, on the coordinate on on the fiber that I showed you before, and we consider a flux D six brains which wraps the entire uh, six dimensional base, and they will correspond to a combination of M two and M five brains in uh, in eleven dimensions. So first of all, one, one good thing that we find is that if you compute the DBI action, it looks like indeed exactly the, uh, the form for a DBI action uh, is something which resemble, like, which has a meaning uh, in the, at, the, um, at the level of four dimensional supergravity, because indeed the DBI action is formed, like it's uh, composed of two parts. And the, the first part is nothing else than the absolute value of the central charge of the supergravity Lagrangian. This was also an observation made in another, uh, another like a, in the case of the reduction of the S7, was found also by, um, by Asplund and F and, and Jinkowski in, uh, in 2015. So this is another, like some sort of, it goes into the same direction of this one, of this, uh, of this work here. So if you plug the effective potential coming from, this DB, uh, from the DBI action for a flux C6, indeed you get that you find stable probes. So this is a configuration that tells you how the, um, how the fields behave here. The hypermultiplicity is, is very, very, is 
almost constant, but not quite compatible with our numerical precision. This solution here has indeed uh, a massive vector switched on and the potential for a D6, for a flat D6 has a dip which is below zero. So it means that this sort of configuration here will have a, a, a probe brain, like probe D6 brain, which is stable outside the horizon. And upon back reaction, this can, this, we can imagine this will turn into a multi-center uh, multi black hole. And in order to find this, it was like, it was very hard to find because for every solution that we find numerically, I mean, every solution that we, we are finding takes a lot of time to simulate on the computer. So what we did is we, we took the original work in Phaleopolis gauge supergravity of uh, the NEFE collaborators, and we detected where the, the, re, uh, the parameter region of stable probes were, and we tried to took some intuition from, from this paper in order to, to localize where the stable probes should have been. And after a bit of work, we actually, we managed to find uh, the stable probes as well. So again, the expectation uh, like uh, really like was like confirmed the fact that, uh, so um, here indeed, if we raise the temperature, we get that indeed like temperature passing from in appropriate units, we pass from 0 0.38 to 0 0.08. Uh, raising the temperature, uh, the states with metastable and unstable probes get populated, while if we lower the temperature, we find stable probes. There is also like uh, some, some dependence on the word volume flux of this uh, flux this experience, but it's, it's a bit more murky. We cannot really, there seems to be a specific range of word volume flux for which you find stable probes outside this range of finite, this finite range of parameters. Uh, the, the probe becomes mm, metastable or unstable. And uh, plus, we can also uh, plot where are the stable probes with respect to the massive vector field halo, which is still like, a, uh, which is still like, um, still is there outside the horizon. So it turns out that the metastable probes, so the, the, the metastable probes, which are like, which have this, um, this orange profile, they tend to be uh, closer to the horizon, uh, while the stable probes, uh, like their equilibrium distance instead lies, let's say, behind the massive halo, like. This, this, sorry, these three ones that you find on the, on the left, they are stable probes, so with this potential which dips below zero. And uh, the metastable one is that they are pushed, uh, let's say, towards the horizon. And also for this one, this is like a, a flux D6 brain on top of a purely electric, uh, purely electric configuration. We, um, again, let me remind you that indeed we have set to zero the magnetic component of the Higgs U1. So we don't have any vortices which potentially uh, could alter the picture. But for the moment, we are just going to work with the static and spherically symmetric configurations. So here is the probe analysis. So we, uh, the probe analysis uh, shows that there are stable probes. So what we wanted, if you lower enough the temperature and if you restrict to a specific um, range of, uh, range of uh, parameters in your phase space, what we wanted to do, the next, uh, the next thing that we wanted to do is to try to see if, um, if there exist stable probes on top of a supersymmetric background, just to see if this can be useful for the microstate counting, because the microstate counting is more easily performed if you have supersymmetry. So as a first approximation, the next step that we wanted to do is to try to see if there exist um, uh, stable probes on top of uh, something which is BPS, and that's what we did. Uh, we did next. So indeed, BPS solutions, as I was mentioned before, of uh, like spherical and hyperbolic black holes were found in this uh, paper by El Maggi, Petrini, Zaffaroni. So they found the new horizon geometry for the same Lagrangian that I showed you before, gauge supergravity. They analytically found the new horizon geometry of the form ADS2 times uh, sigma, where the sigma is uh, can be two sphere or a hyperbolic, uh, hyperbolic plane. So the geometry at the horizon was found analytically, and then the full solutions were found numerically. And uh, for this, uh, in this work, they give exactly like they spell out the conditions for one quarter uh, supersymmetry to be uh, so on. Um, one quarter of supersymmetries to be um, to be preserved via the so-called topological twist, which means that the solution uh, have a non-trivial component in the have a non-trivial uh, magnetic gauge field. So uh, indeed, since we are working in a setup with zero axioms, uh, we kept the setup. So we had to find out if where, whether this, the um, the condition of having zero axioms was compatible with supersymmetry, and it was compatible only in the case where you have hyperbolic horizon. So that's what we are, what will be, 
Condili next. So the supersymmetric solution that we analyzed I have, I have no axios, have purely magnetic charges, and uh, uh, they have a hyperbolic, uh, they have a horizon with hyperbolic slices. Um, so indeed, they are parameterized in this way. I won't bore you with the details, but you can find the new horizon geometry analytically. Numerically, going very close to extremality is in general problematic. So, and especially because for us, we don't solve exactly, we don't solve directly the supersymmetry equations, but we solve the Einstein equation and then we try to push it close and close to extremality. So we managed to go close to extremality, uh, like in such a way that the values that we get uh, for our uh, scalar fields at the horizon are within 2% um, with respect to those that are uh, the analytic value that you will find from the supersymmetry, from the supersymmetry variations. So indeed, there is room for improvement. But what we find so far is that if you, even if you push uh, the temperature really, 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 really um, close to zero, so meaning if you if you want your solution to be very, very close to a BPS one, still the potential does not show any sign of inflection. So we do not find stable probes on this sort of uh, on this sort of backgrounds. It is something that is still work in progress, but so far our results are this way that we've, we're finding stable probes uh, in another region of space time. But when you when you restrict yourself to a supersymmetric configuration, it seems that uh, it is outside the region of parameter space in which you can actually find stable probes. This is something that um, that needs a bit more investigation, but that's for the moment what what we find. So okay, let me just recap for a moment. I think I'm almost a bit, oh, I'm, I'm proceeding at least. <laughs> okay, let me just recap what we have found uh, so far for the, in this, um, in this you know, recap below. So we have found, first of all, some, the fact that black brains can be unstable towards nucleation of space and filling probes, which is something that, uh, that already uh, was, um, let's say, indicative of some, of, uh, let's say, of some, yeah, it was, like an intuition about the fact that if you lower the temperature, something something could happen uh, at the horizon of an anticipator anticipator black hole. Moreover, we have found stable and metastable metastable uh, D six uh, brains uh, on top of a purely electric configuration in a specific uh, in a specific range of parameters for small temperature. For the moment, however, as I was mentioning in the last slide, we don't find uh, stable probes on supersymmetry background. Uh, which are magnetic and with zero axioms. So of course, if you turn on the axioms, if you if you just uh, add different kind of charge, if you consider the ionic solutions, this can all change. But for the moment, our analysis tells us that it's um, that it, these configurations, like uh, stable probes on supersymmetric backgrounds, from what we find, they are not they are not quite possible. So before going on with our um, with the recap about uh, microstate counting, let me just mention that another thing that we want to study now is that uh, is to try to take the small black hole or the asymptotically flat limit, because indeed in asymptotically flat, uh, there exists a phenomenon of, of wall crossing at which uh, by tuning particularly the, the, the moduli of your solution, you can actually find uh, the multicenter configurations in specific, uh, in specific range for, um, of parameters for your moduli, for your, sorry, for your scalar field in your solutions. So uh, there, like, Indeed, in asymptotically flat case, there exist phenomena such as wall crossing, uh, for which as upon tuning specifically the moduli, moduli of your solution, two center gets, gets pushed apart and, and, um, and the um, bound state ceases to exist. However, we expect that due to the fact that we have a confining potential uh, of negative cosmological constants, so this uh, confining effect of anticipated asymptotic, well, the two centers will not be pushed apart. So there will be some sort of like the wall crossing that we find in asymptotically flat space will be some sort of like, a, will turn into some sort of caged variant of the of wall crossings because the radius cannot really diverge because the bound state eventually will feel this confining potential of ADS. So wall crossing will not be possible. But what we're gonna do the, here is probably try to analyze this sort of phenomenon and phenomena just uh, perturbatively like uh, in the limit in which uh, the cosmological constant is very, very small, uh, which, which also uh, amounts to the fact that we are gonna work with, uh, we're gonna try to analyze this sort of, uh, this sort of uh, phenomena in the case of small black hole. So, okay, this is like the, 
the, um, the results of our findings so far about the, the probe uh, about the probe analysis. Let me just go Sorry, back. Can I, can I ask a yes. question about that if you're going on? Uh, yes. Um, so, I mean, so my intuition about the, again, the asymptotically flat case is more that, um, uh, is, is more that sort of the second center, if you think of it as a probe, it's sort of kept uh, at this equilibrium distance due to, let's say, angular momentum that's sort of keeping it mm -hmm. maybe from yes. collapsing in. And so, and so I would certainly expect, like you say, I guess, to, that these kind of things exist when you turn on, uh, when you go to ADS, so if, it, if the cosmological constant is small, but I guess, mm -hmm. I guess what you're saying is they will exist, but they won't be super symmetric, probably. That's what your results are suggesting. Yeah, that's, uh, right. Yes, that's what we are, um, that's what we are finding now. Right. Of course, the, the, our analysis in the supersymmetric case is very, um, it's very incomplete because, uh, because indeed, uh, like, uh, we consider just a specific uh, kind of supersymmetric background, which is the one which is, uh, has no axions, has no ionic charges. Moreover, we are completely agnostic uh, about, uh, about the fact that, I mean, we don't know if our probe actually preserves supersymmetries. Um, so from our DBI action, like if you, um, mm -hmm. I mean, we know that if you reduce, like our setup is reducing uh, this sort of, um, this sort of like, uh, like reducing from M theory from 11 dimensions to type 2A along the direction of the fiber. But, uh, but indeed, many people, like uh, the background that you get in 10 dimensions will not preserve supersymmetry. Right. So we are not in a position to, to see that the probe itself, they are supersymmetric. So this analysis here is a bit like, yeah, we have tried to impose supersymmetry on the background solution. Right. Uh, we are very agnostic. <laughs> this is just a very three level, three level, um, a three level analysis, let's say. We just impose a supersymmetry of our background. It seems that we don't find stable probes on top of them. Um, we don't know if this probe actually uh, themselves, they wrap, uh, they wrap cycles such a way to preserve supersymmetry. And, uh, but yes, what you say, yeah, this is what we find so far. We find that uh, there can be some sort of multicenter configuration, most likely from our, from our analysis, it looks like it's difficult to find them like a preserved supersymmetry. Do, do you have any intuition from, from the BPS uh, condition or equations how this, that this maybe has to be true? I mean, that somehow as soon as you turn on a little cosmological constant, your BPS condition is always, uh, or can never be saturated anymore, something like that, or, or is it not as easy to see? As, uh... It's not as easy to see. I mean, um, I can come back to this towards the end, but um, I mean, I think that uh, you could still, like in, even in case of gauge supergravity, we could still rewrite your action in terms of uh, squares, mm -hmm. uh, but you can, you're not able to solve this, uh, these equations, yeah. uh, for sure not analytically, maybe some people try numerically and so on. I would not say that it's, uh, that we can find some no-go mm -hmm. theorem. I mean, I would not go as far sure. as that. This is just a, um, yeah, this is just something that we find via the probe analysis. If someone can be better than us to solve the full SUSY equations, then or or check that they have no solutions, then then right. be my guess. Right. Sure. <laughs> be my yeah. guess. But uh, yeah, for now, I mean, I know that there is this lore about the fact that you multicenter black holes can exist, but they won't be supersymmetric. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, is what we find, but I don't know if it's really <laughs> because right. our analysis is too restricted in the supersymmetric uh, in the supersymmetric setting that doesn't allow you to find more stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is something that uh, so uh, indeed like uh, connecting back to the previous point that so we don't find uh, stable probes on supersymmetric backgrounds, but what does the microstate counting uh, tell us? Uh, like all this microscopy, does it hint to some sort of new physics or some multicenter configuration? Well, I will review it into this section, but the point is that what we have uh, so far is just, um, is just a bit limited. We, we don't have an exact, uh, it's too early to tell if the microstate counting uh, tell us about, uh, could potentially uh, foresee some, some other sort of like um, configurations. 
it, we are at a really too early stage to make predictions, but let me just review in the next, in the last couple of slides, what is the status of the microseed counting for ADS, ADS black holes. So indeed for single center black hole solutions, so the black holes which are preserved SUSI are very well known starting from, from work uh, back in 2009. So these are static spherically symmetric uh, black holes, um, which can be written down analytically and uh, they preserve one quarter supersymmetry and they are a solution with asymptotically they are anti-sitter and the neuron geometry is of the form ADS2 times sigma g where sigma g can also be a sphere and for this sort of configuration the microseed counting was successful meaning you can compute in supergravity your macroscopic entropy it will be a function of the charges in this case will be for sure function of particularly electromagnetic and magnetic charges because it is um, required to have magnetic charge in order to preserve supersymmetry. So one can compute the partition function of ABGM on the Euclidean boundary of the solution, which is S1 times sigma g, with magnetic fluxes uh, through the sigma g. And one can do this thing via localization. And in the larger limit, uh, the partition function upon extremization with respect to the fugacities, this reproduces the Beckett and Hawking entropy of the black hole. So this is like, it was a, Mm, was indeed like this is, was a successful result, meaning that you can find uh, the black hole entropy uh, of the supersymmetry black uh, of the entropy of the supersymmetry black hole in terms of a computation of ground states in the dual field theory. This was also generalized to other kind of black holes, uh, in particular black holes with angular momentum. So this sort of black holes were already known in the '92 in the case of minimal supergravity. There was also some isolated examples do by Svetich and collaborators uh, in which the charges are pairwise equal. And uh, together with my collaborators, we have provided uh, two full classes with all the charges which are uh, possible switched on. So these are all like dionic with angular momentum as well. And for one of these classes in particular, what you have is that the entropy can be derived by a very simple function, which is called the entropy function which extremize with respect to the fugacities, which are this delta, which are the chemical potentials uh, dual to the, to the electromagnetic charges and the, the, um, the fugacity for the angular momentum. So this is the angular velocity. So if you extremize the entropy function subject to this constraint um, with respect to this delta and omega, uh, you need uh, have the entropy of the black hole and the entropy uh, coincides with the larger limit of the super conformal index that were computed by the group in Korea um, in the larger limit and also uh, in the limit in which you have low, uh, uh, low angular, angular velocity. So this indeed coincides with the larger limit upon taking the fugacities to be complex. And uh, for a long time, uh, people tried to compute the super conformal index with real fugacities and they didn't find any uh, correct scaling. The scaling needs to be n to the three halves. So, okay, so for the, even for the point of view of uh, refinement, the angular momentum, uh, like these studies, which were actually kind of recent, show that indeed, and were also generalized by a lot of, lots of other groups, seem that indeed you can reproduce exactly the entropy of the rotating black hole uh, from, the, from the dual field theory, just from a computation in the boundary. What is the status then for the systems of black hole that I showed you? Those that come from this uh, more exotic sasaki einstein truncation, which indeed, uh, given the fact that they have no contractible cycle, uh, they, can, they can allow brain to be wrapped and um, so for this sort of uh, quivers, which are dual to the Q111 reduction, which is the one that I, that I used to find the black hole solutions, um, the index, if you compute the super conformal index or the twisted index, in this sort of theory, um, it seems that the, the, um, let's say the super conformal index does not depend on some of the charges that, uh, that instead the black hole entropy uh, depend on. So there are specific kind of, uh, of solutions, oh, sorry, of uh, charges which are uh, called baryonic charges. So the entropy depends on all the flavor charges and also the baryonic charges, but these are invisible uh, when you compute a super conformal index, so there is a mismatch. And uh, so in the case of a BGM instead, this was all uh, like uh, this computation was performed and was working pretty well. And the studies that we have uh, we have so far, however, they revealed that there were like 
they did not reveal any new saddles. So from the, the computations, it's very early to, to tell. But for now, uh, what we can say is that for a BGM, the studies did not uh, find any, um, any sort of evidence for supersymmetric uh, multicenter solutions or new saddles potentially. The only thing that, uh, so, in, uh, so for now, it's a bit too early to tell, but um, this potentially might be an indication that perhaps uh, these solutions, when you add supersymmetry, they, they actually might not be there. So there are some other, so of course, there are lots of things that one should, uh, should understand better. For instance, uh, as I was mentioning, the, um, even in the single center rotating case, the entropy function is extremized uh, at values of the Bugattis which are complex. So this is something that it's a bit, uh, it's a bit uh, tricky, I would say, to, to make sense when you work with the Lorentzian solutions. So you have to really be very careful in passing from Euclidean to Lorentzian, uh, to Lorentzian solution. One needs to understand this better in order to understand also what are actually the moduli that one can tune in order to potentially find um, this multicenter or this wall crossing uh, kind of phenomena. And before concluding, let me just mention that indeed, uh, so instead for the four dimensional super conformal index, so when you, uh, when you go into five dimensions, so for ADS5 solutions, it seems instead that the group of uh, Ardeali, Hong, and Liu, they, find, they found uh, that some evidence from the super conformal index, uh, some evidence for some sort of more uh, exotic configuration other than the single center black hole solution. So they find that in, specific, um, in a specific range of, uh, of parameter space, the entropy coming from the index is, uh, uh, is like a fraction. So it's uh, the entropy of the single center black hole divided by integers, which are two, three, four, and five. But it's not, uh, it's not quite clear what is uh, if uh, this uh, result here has some, some direct meaning in terms of Lorentzian, Lorentzian solutions, Lorentzian black hole solutions. So all of this is to say like the take home message for this is that um, there is for, for the moment, we cannot claim uh, that the super conformal index or the twisted index gives some evidence about multicenter configurations, and especially for the case on the truncation of Q111 and the other cousin manifold, uh, even the single center uh, microstate counting is a bit problematic. So there's still a lot of work to do, but this is something that uh, uh, still is, it's very interesting because it can, it can give or not evidence for possibly new saddles, which is always something very like evidence for new physics. And it's also, it is, I, in my opinion, it's also very, very exciting, even if it's uh, still at a very early, early stage. So, okay, let me then come to the, to the conclusion <laughs> for the moment. So what we have done now is that indeed we have uh, charted the parameter, uh, the parameter space for all these uh, different kind of um, probes. Sorry, I went on. So uh, we have charted again the parameter space, there seem to exist no supersymmetric probes, uh, which are stable, which in principle upon back reaction could turn into a multicenter black hole into some sort of bound state. This is what, uh, what we seem to find. We need to still interpret the fact that for black brains, we have this, sort of this space time, this instability towards space time filling brains, the one that had uh, the, um, the potential that was uh, some sort of like a runaway behavior, let's say. And uh, the, same, uh, the same kind of uh, potential, the same kind of instability was also found in a, in a paper uh, by this group. And uh, this was found for, um, for space time filling D3 brains on the conifold truncation. So it seems that also in five dimensions, this, uh, the aplanar horizon is unstable uh, in this sort of truncation with, with Betty multiplets and baryonic charges. They are unstable towards some sort of space time filling, uh, like emitting space time filling brains to go all the way to the boundary. This is something that we need to, to study a bit more and to try to find some more satisfactory interpretation of what this means. And uh, moreover, okay, we have, uh, as I was mentioning, all these uh, bound state solutions should correspond to, uh, indeed, in the in dual field theory, uh, should like should be reflected into the fact that you have inhomogeneities in charge densities or also in, in magnetizations, and uh, it would be nice to try to see uh, to have an idea of how the viscosity 
we have in this sort of system. So indeed, the viscosity is computed by the cross section of low energy gravitons, and you could you could kind of understand how an object of this kind might have a higher cross section with respect to perhaps um, a very homogeneous black brain solution. So the viscosity is, uh, is supposed to be much higher than the one of the of the um, planar black brain, but this is something that still needs to be verified. Okay, this is my last slides. Of course, uh, we have uh, indeed uh, um, we have swept under the rug some subtleties which we are currently studying regarding boundary conditions uh, in this sort of EBGM-like theories. So we still need to understand a bit uh, which kind of um, boundary conditions are needed in order for our system to be uh, to be well defined in terms of uh, boundary condition in in EBGM. This was like studied in paper by Tachikawa and, uh, and collaborators. And moreover, as I was mentioning, uh, understanding the microstates for the quiver, uh, which are dual to this sort of configurations, it's still problematic. So there is still like quite some, some work uh, to do already in this sort of models. But more generally, generally one can, can still uh, reproduce, like we can try to reproduce our computation or change our like the dimensionality of space time. For instance, one could ask if there exists some more general five dimensional supersymmetric solutions. Uh, given some evidence for exotic solutions that were, find, um, were supposed to find via the superconformal index. So still a bit murky if this, uh, if this configuration should really correspond to Lorentzian black holes, maybe not, but it's, uh, for instance, what could try to study um, brains which are wrapped on cycles in the conifold truncation, which is the same one as, uh, as these people um, actually uh, considered and see if there exists some stable uh, brains, stable wrapped pro brains in, in five dimensions to see if there exists any sort of uh, um, exotic uh, five dimensional uh, configuration. And moreover, one can even think about more exo even more exotic configurations such as um, like black Saturn, supersymmetric black Saturns in, in five dimensions in order to see if really like you can still have some composite object, but with a different topology. The Saturns are just like a, a black hole in, in, the, in the center surrounded by a black ring. So this is something that uh, you could study, uh, perhaps see if, you, if the solution can be supersymmetric and potentially uh, maybe if you have supersymmetry, you might, uh, you might be amenable to some sort of, uh, sort of microstate counting as well. So there are all these sort of like more general exotic solution that one can, that again, in this flavor of finding all sorts of weird horizons, one can also try and study. So, okay, and I came to the conclusions. So thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for this nice talk. Uh, yes, uh, everyone please unmute and give a clap for Chiara for giving such a nice talk. Can I, can I ask a question about the and Black you Saturn? Can, you I, can ask questions now. Uh, oh, yes. Sorry. I, I think it can. Hello. Yeah, because the connection was a bit. Uh, yeah, the connection was a bit um, breaking up. But um. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now you can ask okay. question. No problem. Okay. Thanks. Um. It was just about the black Saturn, the supersymmetric or possibly supersymmetric black Saturn idea at the end. Um, so I, there, there are some theorems about the the fact that you can't have supersymmetric black rings in ADS uh, or yes. things like this, right? So how would you how, how do you propose? To, I don't. I'm not super familiar with what what goes into into those, but like how do you propose to get around them with? Oh well, yeah, by the way, this uh, would be all like something that we are thinking about um, by doing it uh, uh, systems of probes again, like that goes into the direction of the black fold and so on. But you cannot have supersymmetric black uh, rings in ADS because the, the pressure for, I think, for a string to be bent into, and to be kind of fold into itself and form a ring uh, in, and so anti space cannot, cannot provide the necessary tension. But perhaps by putting some sort of like a 
black hole like in the center of this black ring, you will still manage to satisfy the equilibrium conditions such a, in such a way that a string could still could still stay outside. I see. So the the these these theorems basically tell you you can't have an isolated black ring, but exactly. you could possibly they, they still potentially you still have a like a black Saturn. Uh, or, I see. Yes. I see. Okay. So there exists like um, I think uh, Imparan and collaborators. They have via black hole method. They proved that uh, black Saturns can can exist in EDS, but they didn't study a supersymmetry of them. So right. we just wanted to see like if uh, if this thing can provide necessary like balancing to some sort to the to the force that uh, that will uh, allow the, the ring to still to still stay if you put something in the center. I mean, naively, I would almost think that that uh, putting a black hole in the center would make things make things worse, right? Because in ADS, everything is sort of, uh, wait, am I saying it right? Yeah, in ADS, everything wants to sort of be pushed inwards. Mm -hmm. And so if a black ring can't exist because it's sort of, or a supersymmetric black ring can't exist because it's sort of being, it wants to squash into a black hole, I guess. Then if you <laughs> add an extra black hole in the center, won't it get worse? Or maybe- Yeah, you will have more. like all, all sorts of interaction also due to the yeah. fact that you will have a, charges and everything and mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, it might be uh, I mean yeah in order to have supersymmetry you need to put also charge so that's what we are yeah we are so you need to, to fine-tune the how these things interact with each other yes. so, yeah 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 okay cool it might be that uh, it won't turn mm -hmm. into something but we are that's what we are trying now for, for sure Black Saturns exist in uh, mm -hmm. in ADS. I mean, given this, but yeah, finding supersymmetry would be yeah. something that we are we are trying to we are we're trying to figure out. Right. Al always with the with the approximate methods. Not we don't have any backup solutions. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, and, and the, oh, uh, please continue. Please continue. Sorry. Oh no, no! I was just uh, even know to to go back to your uh, to your question, uh, like Daniel. At some point, I mean, yeah, it's um, this is like the squaring that you get from. I mean, this is like okay, a formula. Maybe I should have written it a bit better, but in principle, I think it would be possible to find the squaring of the gauge supergravity action to get the equation, like the NF equation for gauge supergravity. Just that then solving these equations is, is, is not possible. I mean, it was not possible so far. Okay, this is just a, something that I put in the backup slide. So <laughs> I'll need to put it a bit more tidy, but uh, I think the equations, the first order equation, you might have it, but to find them in order to solve them, to find uh, multicenter black holes, that's the, that's the hard part that, was, that we were not able so far. So any other question, guys, you have, please ask. Obishek, do you have any question, Nilesh? Uh, no, sir, thank you. Uh, okay. So if not, then uh, uh, thank you for this contribution. And this will be posted in my channel, YouTube. I will share the link with you. And uh, thanks. Uh, most importantly, stay safe, all of you. And uh, this is very important right now. And uh, hopefully, we will get back uh, to you later in future. And you will come up with some new ideas of your work in this forum. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you. OK, thank you very much. Let me just stop sharing. So, yeah. Bye. Okay.